Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you with us. While the world is not watching, Haiti is seething again. Massacres have occurred in La Saline, Haiti. Men, women, and children have been killed, raped, burned alive, and few are watching. But the Real News is watching. In a special report, Margaret Prescott, who hosts Sojourner Truth at KPFK in Los Angeles, went to Haiti at great risk to herself to document the violent repression that is taking place in Haiti at this moment. She's now joining us to share what she has seen, and, we'll, and we will be seeing what she saw in a video that she brought home that they're editing now. And let me warn everyone that some of what you are about to see and hear is quite gruesome. Margaret Prescott, welcome. Good to have you back here with us on The Real News. Thank you so much. And, and I'd like to say I was very, um, I'm, I'm very glad that The Real News is doing this and helping to get the word out. And part of why I went to Haiti was not only to get information for Pacifica Radio, for the national broadcast that I do, but also for The Real News Network. And I'm glad you did. Because this story is, it's, it's amazing how little has, has, has been known about this story, that actually this particular big episode began with some stories we heard in, in November about massacres taking place in La Saline. But let, let me, we're going to play a short clip here of, of what you had to say about La Saline uh, and why it's the home of liberation. The great Haitian revolution that led to the emancipation of all of us the ending of slavery throughout the Americas. And the people of La Saline, it seems, are still paying a very, very heavy price uh, for that victory because that's something that's never forgotten and that this community is a, a, a center of resistance. Um, the first black republic in the world, right? Um, right here, a center of resistance. So, Margaret, let's, I mean, let's talk a bit about that, what you were saying. Why, why is why is La Saline such a focal point? And why did these massacres occur there in November and they seem to be continuing? Well, historically, uh, La Saline is right on the water. It's right in the area where the slave ships came in. And the road leading up to La Saline actually is where, where the road where slaves were bought and sold. And they have had a long history of resistance that like you, you likely heard uh, or saw in the clip you played. However, what I didn't know before going into La Saline and I found out in La Saline and after I left is that La Saline, given their history of resistance, the uprisings that we have seen somewhat covered in mainstream media last summer, but as well as earlier uh, this year, last fall, they generally begin in La Saline, and then they spread across the capital, Port-au-Prince, spread across the other parts of the country. So in the targeted uh, uh, targeting of La Saline, that was very, very pointed. It's to send a political message to strike terror in the heart of people who would dare go on the streets and protest, not only against fuel prices, but asking where is the Petro Caribe dollars, the over $2 billion stolen during the, the previous and present administrations, demanding that the president um, of Haiti, Jovenel Moïse, the U.S.-backed president of Haiti, Jovenel Moïse, step down. Right. These are some of the demands of the movement. So the attack on La Saline was really an attempt to dampen the uprising, to dampen uh, those protests and to strike terror in the heart of those who dare to stand up. And I should also uh, say that th this massacre, the one that happened in November of 2018, the largest since the Duvalier years. For people who may know something about Haiti's history, you always read about the brutal Duvalier years where you had the Tonton Makut, uh, these paramilitary, uh, government-backed paramilitary uh, forces going around uh, killing and burning people. And there, uh, the, the last one uh, that we know of, that we could compare with what happened in La Saline was a massacre, I think, was in 1987 of peasants, where 127 peasants were killed. Well, the numbers are greater now in La Saline. Do we, and do the we massacres know exactly are how continuing. Many people, do we know how many people were killed in La Saline? Do we have a real We really idea? don't. 
there's been an official report uh, done by a human rights organization. And when they did the report, which was December of last year, they said there were 77 victims. However, people on the ground uh, and other uh, opposition officials that I, I've spoken to, we spoke to when we were on the ground in Haiti, say those numbers are insulting, that the numbers are far greater uh, than that. And if you also consider that the massacres have continued uh, beyond November, you just have a, a sense of, of those numbers. So let me, let's, let me talk about it a bit more. One of the things you said in this video, and very clearly all the time, was that you didn't show a lot of people's faces because you, the fear that of, of uh, repression and retribution if they were seen. But then a number That's of people right. in the community came up kind of fearlessly and said and, and put themselves on camera to talk to you. Um, and in one of those scenes, um, there was a, a, a man talking about a uh, whose, whose woman whose husband was killed, uh, another one who lost her son and was burned alive. So, Margaret, so talk about these people you interviewed, the ones that, the, the ones that, um, that did put their faces on camera, that horrendous picture of the woman whose body was scarred, uh, the other one who saw her son burned and alive and killed, um, and they were f not afraid to come forth and talk. So, I, so I talk a bit about that moment and what was it like for you and what this really means to all of us. Yeah, it was really just amazing because we were very, very careful, as as you said, because we don't want to put anyone at, at risk. And we, we knew the danger that was involved. But as we spent a bit more time in La Saline and as people began that that relationship of, of trust uh, happened more, I'll, I'll also say that uh, we were some of the first uh, media outlets to go in there with sound and camera actually talking to the people. And they really appreciated that. And I have to say that it was the women who first came forward and said, I'm ready to go on camera. Uh, you, could you imagine the risk that they're taking? But just the the grief and the rage was was such that we were all really stunned, and not only by the courage of people to come forward to say what happened to them, but what they described, what they described, uh, a pregnant woman uh, talking about her husband uh, being killed, being not only killed, but cut up, his body being cut up with, uh, with a machete, a woman whose son was similarly killed in front of her. They forced her to watch it. And she was so traumatized by the whole thing, her entire body has now uh, broken out. Um, uh, you know, a, a man whose son was was killed, hearing about bodies that were, were burned alive, uh, pregnant women uh, coming forward. It was just an incredible moment of courage. But you know what? Given the history of La Celine and given the Haitian people who remain so resilient in the face of everything, this is the most impoverished place in the Americas. La Celine, along with City Soleil, the most impoverished in Haiti. So you could just imagine the conditions that people were living under in the first place. But nevertheless, they consistently take to the streets. They consistently say, we want to complete our revolution that, according to the history books, was won in 1804. But people fe still feel that they are still struggling for that democracy, that they had a glimmer of that democracy with the election of the first democratically elected president, Jean Baton Aristide. And as you may know, there were two US backed coups against uh, President Aristide. And this, uh, they, uh, the party that he leads, Lavalas, they did run a candidate, Dr. Maris Narcisse, in this last election. And it seems as though the United States, France, Canada, and the one percenters in Haiti who do their bidding would do anything rather than have Lavalas back in power again, because the base of Lavalas are the impoverished people in Haiti. But people have not forgotten that. And they're still holding on uh, to the fact that they are determined against uh, being up against everything to continue their struggle for democracy. It's quite remarkable and it's quite inspiring, I'll have to say. So we're here talking with Margaret Prescott uh, from KPFK uh, and her show, To General Truth, and she went to Haiti uh, with the real news to tell this very special story. 
and uh, we're going to pick this story up uh, with the with the body of a woman who was burned alive, uh, oh. and also political consequences of this, and look at some more of these well, the visuals that we brought back, and to talk more about that with Margaret. Uh, I want to thank Margaret for doing this for uh, for all of us, and uh, stay with us for the next segment. I'm Mark Steiner here for the Real News.